Welcome to Code 0292. My name is Lungile. In this week's episode, the Code 0292 team went to White City Stadium where PASAF was being held. PASAF is an abbreviation for the Provincial Annual Sports, Science and Arts Festival, which showcases the learners' talents through the updated curriculum. So if you want to find out more about what happened during that event, stay tuned for more. My name is uh, Kiani Moyo. In this uh, festival, I'm the public relations manager. And um, what is this festival? This festival is all about uh, interpreting the 
competence-based curriculum, which at the onset of the review of the old curriculum was once known as the updated curriculum. But now we have moved on to call it competence-based curriculum in that we need now to, to continuously assess how competent our learners are becoming towards uh, the, the curriculum you know, requirements. Uh, the competency-based curriculum well uh, has been a process that uh, kicked in earnest with the introduction of the updated curriculum in 2017 where this uh, series of festivals was launched known as the annual science sports and arts festival where the inception of the uh, uh, festival was done in 2017 yeah and so far, how many so far we've had uh, this is the third edition the first one was in 2017 um, where we culminated in the national uh, level of the the festival where we it was held in harare the first one then the second one we were supposed to host as Bulawayo Metropolitan Province. We couldn't hold it because of the cholera outbreak that was there in 2018. So hopefully the 2019 edition is going to be successful and Bulawayo is hosting it again. Yeah. So can you maybe also explain to us how Yes, it is very important, um, you know, in realizing particularly three aspects of um, of, 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 of development in, in, in learners. Firstly, in the knowledge that they interpret, you know, um, from the curriculum, the things that they learn, they are now interpreting them through skills uh, development. Which brings me to the second aspect, which is skills development. You can see we've got um, fine arts happening, we've got agriculture happening, we've got uh, performing arts happening, you, you know, we've got uh, sporting activities happening. Those are all skills. Then, lastly, you are looking at the attitudes of the learners. You know, we are saying our learners uh, have developed positive attitudes towards embracing the various competences that they are expected in the curriculum. They, they, are, they are keen to, to, to explore or to exhibit who they are. You are looking at a vast array of concepts which are not there in the old curriculum, but well in the Rhodesian oriented curriculum, which was more academic than practical. You know, I've got learners who may not be gifted in the classroom, but are now, you know, ex exhibiting their, their talents elsewhere. Public speaking, storytelling, uh, you know, handwork like beadwork, woodcraft, uh, cake making, embroidery, manicure, pedicure. That doesn't need any mathematics as long as the skill is there. Yeah. So how is this? Um, how how are the festivals going to? How are the festivals going to make sure that um, learners will be active? The practical life skills that they have after yeah, like I, I said earlier on, the competency-based curriculum is all learner-centered. You know, right from ECD, uh, ECD A, the basic level, right up to A level, it is all you know addressing those issues of of, of skills development, attitude development, knowledge development, and then these festivals. Um, they start off at school level. Every year, in the beginning of the first school term, they've got what is known as the School Annual Science, Sports and Arts Festival, acronymed SASAF. So at SASAF level, we are imagining all learners in the school are going through the, the, the menu of activities. 
and naturally the good ones fall in and those that are not as competent they fall off because perhaps they are you know in other areas of competencies so from the school level we now move on to the next level which is the zonal schools within the, the same zone also known as the cluster so we've got the cluster annual schools uh, sports science and arts festival kasaf where we're now really sort of refining from the school level going upwards then we have the district dasaf district annual sports science and arts festival we're still refining right until we come to this level where we are today which is the pasaf at provincial level so like you see we're still coming up with finer products as we go up the ladder right up to the point when we come to the national level which is the national uh, annual sports science and arts festival nasaf like i said earlier on this year the 10 provinces will congregate here at this venue you know where we are now saying out of the national cream who really exhibited the proper competencies yeah yes um, these festivals you know i believe they should be embraced by all of us within the community of stakeholders we are not only looking at the parents we are not only looking at the immediate communities but we are also looking at the corporate sector uh, non-governmental organizations who should come in and demonstrate you know a, a hands-on interest in these learners perhaps by sponsoring particular categories can you imagine perhaps if um, you would say the, the media fraternity would sponsor public speaking and debate because that's their line of 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 of, of, of expertise or, or interest public speakers you know in the media uh, television and what have you you are looking at uh, perhaps general sponsorship in terms of um, investment we are looking at uh, say bread manufacturers our learners they consume bread every day but they are conspicuous bread manufacturers by the absence at such festivals shoe manufacturers our learners they are all putting on black shoes here the shoe manufacturers they are conspicuous by their absence and we are saying that's a critical critical sponsorship gap that is there so we need to embrace all our people this is a festival for the learners so let us begin involving ourselves right from school level cluster level district level provincial level and at national level that's my you know belief that uh, we need to to encompass all our 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 society you know into coming up with this concept because it's a community concept yeah Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jombi Putishaba from Amsope High School. Amsope High School Agriculture, Aquaculture Project. Uh, our fish pond construction, it was constructed in the month of April using a common brick. We did not plaster our walls. Instead, we used a dam liner, a black plastic, to avoid the patch of water out of the pond. We use we culture our water using chicken manure, which contains nitrogen, phosphorus, and calcium. This this chicken manure makes our fish to grow fast. It adds more growth to our fish. We culture we also culture our water into green color to prevent it from kingfishers. It's like sort of camouflage for the fish. Uh, our tilapia starter one for feeding fingerlings is, is at the side. Our pond is 10 by 10 meters. Our shallow end is our shallow end is 80 centimeters. Then our deepest area is 1,5 meters. Inside the fish pond, we have an overflow pipe, which controls the level of water. It's the water, when water gets into upper level, it goes through this overflow pipe to the orchard. Then my second part I will further tell you more about our project. My name is Kumbuzo Schoni. Welcome to our 
this farming project. In other ways, we call it aquaculture. We mainly have two types of fish that are audio promise and quality cars. We have challenges of diseases in our pool. So we avoid frogs by cutting lemons and pouring them inside our pond to prevent frogs and other diseases. We actually have two types of diseases that white spot and ilfangal. We use one kg of salt to avoid this disease. Pouring uh, the it's okay. I'm more interested in the production. If you any fish yet is sold? Any, what's the purpose of this project? We haven't sold any fish yet here at the uh, finger stage. When, 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 when did you start the project? Started in, in the month of April. Uh, now we have, it, there are seven weeks old. They are not fully matured. So we intend to harvest them after six months. We will be big enough to sell. We have 1,300 fish. And what do you feed you? What? what do you feed your fish? We use tilapia stata one to feed our fish. And sometimes we use makos or edwins to feed them. So what's the purpose of this project? Uh, the purpose of the project is uh, for us to learn some skills and other school members to develop a skill of learning how to look to breed the fish. Okay, as I'm talking, what other projects do, are you doing? We uh, have uh, chicken projects of, of layers, uh, to and farming. Those are the other projects we do. Of all the projects which you are doing, which, which one do you think is doing very well? I think uh, aquaculture is doing very well because it is the fastest interest in, in Zimbabwe. My name is Bonisu Ndlovo. I'm from Ishat High School, Zilegaz District. Can you tell us uh, what you do? Um, I'm making uh, some earrings. So I use the jacaranda. Then I painted it using the liquid paint. Then I left it to, uh, I left it to dry. Then um, I took my uh, this uh, chain, the chain, right? Then I put it. I drilled first. Then I put the chain. Then I will use, take the um, nick. This nick, this one. I will open it. And then uh, I will put the needle to the chain. Like this. Oh, sorry. Like this. Then I will close my neck. After that, this one is a crown. I put on a crown to make it uh, to close. Then um, I will cut my uh, using the pliers my neck to the um, required size. After that, I fold. So this one, I fold it using a um, then I would take my um, 
ear. This one is the earring. I'll take my earring. This one. Then I open it. Then I'm basing. I'm basing mukala. Then he's saying you vala when the roots are going out. Saying vala la langa. Then yes, my earring. I'm done with this. Yes, because I like I love Joella. Uh, and the other thing is, I just want to help my community and my school. Yes, uh, I can have a, a career, but not. Uh, I can say I can I can say I will be best on each jewelry making. What else would you like to do? I want to be a cardiologist. So can you also tell us about the other things that you have on display? Um, this one is a sanitary pet bag. Uh, where girls would take so of put um, uh, their pets when they are at school. And then I use the so I saw it. And then these one are earrings. Mainly I made these ones for um, those people who have got a trade law. And then this one is a wish. Then uh, I use the um, I use the embroidery thread these ones to make these things. Then the um, glue to put on to hold them together. Then I also use the earrings, the one that I have showed you, these ones. How much did you sell these earrings? I was uh, two for five dollars. Said. And then this one is a clash bag uh, and the uh, earrings. Then uh, the um, necklace and the bracelet. It's a set on its own. So um, where do you get where do you get this, your materials from? Uh, the jeweler we bought it from uh, China shops. In town, then for this jacaranda, this one is natural. Get it from the jacaranda tree, and um, this is the, this one is the fabric. We put the fabric, and then we saw it. And then for this one, it's a head gear. So we beat it. It we bought the beads. Where you buy your beads from? From um, China shops in town. The enemy. So since you've done all of this work, and where, who is your customer? Where do you actually come? Who do you actually come? Oh, my customers are the community. I do this at school, so the community and the teachers are my customers. Or sometimes I take them to church on Sunday and sell them. Or even my even the students at school, they'll buy this. Yeah, yes, <laughs> and uh, I also made these ones. And for these ones, I may, I use the um, the natural material, like uh, I take um, scraps uh, wood from woodwork. Then uh, they will shape this, these ones for me. They will shape for me. Then uh, 
I use the um, this to make this. So how do you polish them? Because they, since you're saying which they are different from wood, do you, do you polish them? Or? Uh, no, I don't do this on my own. I'll ask the woodwork department to do it for me. And then you, my job is just to join the thing. Is quam. Some are beads. Some are beads are gonna want to laugh. So I told her in town, my shop in town. Yeah, but who is this? I think this is Miss. 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 I'm a prick's lens. So it's quite my, it's quite my lazy in the sense I last, last 10 years. Eh? This 10 years. First 10 years, I want to see it too late much. Yes, I'm a little bit of a 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 yes, I'm a little bit so when I couldn't find me, who are who are we doing this? 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 Who are we doing This is a Paso festival. Actually, it's a program, an ongoing program. I started from Sasaf, then we moved to Kasaf. That was the cluster competitions. Then we moved to Tasaf. Then now we've proceeded to Kasaf, all because we won those competitions. So is this the first time you are exhibiting? No, this is our third time. Right. We've been doing this thing for three years, Angel. The, the, during our first year, we went up to as far as national level with the beadwork project. We had an entrepreneurship project. We had beadwork, we had tie and dye, we had printing. So we'd gone with those projects to Harare for the national competitions. And we won all the competitions we brought gold here yeah, through those categories. In all the categories, we had gold in Harare. Now we are back here again. Last year we were supposed to go for national, but we couldn't go for national all because there was a cholera outbreak, and which then the competitions were cancelled. So now we are back here. We hope to proceed to the nationals again. And how do you think this festival is actually improving in making sure that uh, learners can 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 embrace the updated curriculum? Yeah, with us. Program, I think it's a good program because you find that uh, with school children and they've got different talents they're gifted differently some are academically good some are not but you find that uh, now we are discovering children's talents and uh, these talents will help them in future you find that if a, a child can manage to make some bags can manage to make some beadwork, jewelry handbags um, it's a uh, scatter cushions and then they've got a future mm. so where do you sell your products um we, we always produce the best products so our products market themselves you know you meet some boards carrying our handbag then that's advertising we do the best we make sure everything is perfect uh, how do you choose? Um, are you teaching all the old school or there are particular students? Oh, we've got uh, different categories at our school. So <coughs> there are groups and we've got needs department, we've got science, we've got Eka, we've got Marima, so many different departments. So children choose the ones that they think they can best do. 
Okay, and how many, approximately how many extracurricular activities do we have? At the school? Ah, there's so many. So many. So many, especially with the new curriculum. There's so many. Like we've got, uh, we have poultry project. We've got uh, rabbits. And we produce agricultural goods, like uh, we've got um, vegetables and vegetable gardens, we've got uh, onions, carrots, cabbages, beans, uh, beetroot, and also have different types of vegetables that we grow in our school. Then we also have uh, textile technology, whereby children produce uh, sheets, sheets, bed covers, uh, we've got uh, juvet covers, which they produce. We've got also textile for clothing. Then we've got food technology, whereby they produce different types of meats, bakery. And then we also have uh, beadwork, whereby they do jewelry, handbags, sandals, earrings, headgear. We also have got uh, the marimba. They, they, are, they are taught music skills and they can manage to <coughs> even to produce their own music and write and then uh, there's so many we've got our uh, must play uh, we've got wushu karat there's so many to mention but a few well i'm sure you've heard it all and you've seen it all from me Lungile, it's bye for now make sure that you subscribe to our youtube channel center for innovation and technology and also follow us on our twitter page at w see you next week